We all know that turning on ray tracing is just the I don't want good performance button, but it can make the image look better. Now we also know that it's tough to run even on NVIDIA GPUs, which have stronger ray tracing performance, but what about AMD? <laughs> so you definitely shouldn't buy an AMD GPU for its ray tracing performance, but let's say you already have one. So like a 6800 XT that has a lot of performance headroom. So why don't we go ahead and investigate if at 1440p we can reach some kinds of decent ray tracing settings. Now in a past video, which I can probably link up here somewhere, I've done this more kind of live playing around in a variety of games. But in this video, I'm gonna limit myself to one game and get really good side-by-side -side comparisons. And so that means I want a game that features ray tracing. I want one that features FSR so that we can look at FSR um, and ray tracing in terms of what you gain to the image quality with ray tracing and what you lose when you use FSR compared side-by-side -side with the native resolution. So I need a game with a built-in benchmark with lots of various ray tracing settings and with FSR support, and so that left me with Cyberpunk 2077, which does uh, have a heavier ray tracing implementation than a lot of other games. So to be fair here, if I had used a different game, we might see some better ray tracing performance. There are some games where the ray tracing settings were clearly designed with keeping AMD users, uh, you know, a little more in the game. Uh, whereas Cyberpunk is, uh, again, uh, it gives us a variety. The ray tracing low setting really is just kind of some localized shadows. It doesn't have the massive performance hit that we see some on some others, but once you add in the sun shadows, some of the lighting, the reflections, it can get really heavy. But that's good because then we can turn all those settings off and on, various combinations of FSR, see what reaches playable frame rates. Um, I do have smart access memory enabled on this testing if you happen to be curious, but other than that, I'm running this, the um, Asus tough gaming version of the 6800 XT at its out of the box factory default settings for all of the testing. Let's hop into the benchmarks and then I'll give you some final thoughts. Well, we can immediately tell that just flipping on ray tracing to the ultra settings at 1440p without any kind of FSR is just not at all a reasonable thing to do. So yeah, what we can take this as an opportunity to do though, is to look at the visual difference between 1440p Ultra and 1440p Ray Tracing Ultra. So that's why I've split into this side by side, which means I had to do that funky little, uh, uh, you know, move the performance stats up into the top right there. Here we're going to see the reflections, which I think are the most noticeable ray tracing difference, but you can also see some differences in the lighting quality and in the shadow quality. For example, if we look at the palm tree shadow that's split down the middle here in the street, we can see the softer look of the shadows from the sunlight, and just overall the lighting quality seems a bit different here and more realistic, although there's certainly a massive performance hit given the visual difference. It does look better though. Let's take a look at the averages. Yeah, we're 23.29 versus 85.69. Let's kick on some FSR. So here we're still doing ray tracing ultra on the right hand side, but we've set FSR to the ultra quality preset. So this is a chance to not only look at the difference between, you know, ultra without RT, ultra, ultra with RT, but also FSR ultra quality versus the native 1440p image. And once again, I think it makes sense to do another one of these split screens down the middle so you can kind of see the differences fade in and out on the right and left hand side. So again, we do see like, you know, the, the reflection being very noticeable in that puddle, the overall lighting and shadows. Once again, the frame rate is at least sort of maybe usable with the controller into the 30 to 40 FPS range. Uh, certainly not at all what I would want to do. Now FSR, those vent, the palm trees are one of the most, most noticeable places in it. You can certainly tell it is not the native resolution, although ultra quality does look pretty close at 1440p. It's not identical. So I think we still have not yet reached a frame rate where it makes sense to me, only getting up to a 35.5 average. So if we kick FSR all the way down to the quality setting, 
where it really does start to look a bit fuzzy to me, guys. I don't think I'd actually use it at these settings, but I just wanted to push it to see is there any reasonable way to use FSR at the ultra, uh, sorry, use ray tracing at the ultra settings. And I mean, I do know some people might play at these settings, but for me, FSR is just losing too much of the details, especially in the distance. Look at the chain link fence there, the barbed wire, sorry, barbed wire, not chain link. So yeah, I, I just, for me, FSR quality at 1440p isn't worth it, especially since it's not even getting us to 60 FPS. If it got us to 60 FPS, then, you know, I still wouldn't do it, <laughs> but some people might. I mean, look at the palm trees there. The They look really shimmery and smudged. So, yeah, I, I just don't think that this makes sense. Although, let's see, our frame rate is up to 43.71, still not where I want to be. So I don't think the ray tracing ultra settings make sense. So let's go all the way down to the ray trace low settings. All this does is local shadows, not even sun shadows. So you can see that the frame rate, by the way, we're at native here, not using FSR. The frame rate's actually pretty usable here. Look at the bar stools and the people, the shadows that they cast as it fades in and out. It's certainly more realistic shadows using the ray traced local shadows, but I don't necessarily think to my eye, at least they look noticeably better. They look more realistic, but nothing really looked bad to me on the non ray traced local shadows. So, I don't know. This one, at least we're not having to use FSR at all to get a pretty playable frame rate, especially out here. You can see the frame rate's quite good. So we can use some low ray tracing. Notice that the sun shadows are not ray traced here at the low settings. It's only the local shadows. So this one's usable. This could be a per personal preference thing. For me though, I don't feel like we're gaining enough from the shadows to actually be worth the performance hit, although the performance is fine. We had a 64.19 average. So now let's take a look at ray tracing medium. And this is once again at the native resolution. And we can see here that it's more of a 30 FPS experience, a little bit of a dip below there, but it, that this is the hardest section of the benchmark. And a lot of areas do go above that. This has the ray traced local shadows, as you can see here again. It'll also have ray traced sun shadows uh, and some ray traced lighting at the medium settings. It does not have the ray traced reflections. So as we go out here, we will not see the nicer reflections in this puddle here. Um, but we will actually see the uh, sun shadows looking softer especially as we start to see these uh, shadows um, on the palm trees out here, that type of thing. Again, though, those shadows certainly look softer and that's probably more realistic, but for me, it's not gaining a ton. The reflections are the most noticeable thing to my eye, but, and you know, the shadows and the lighting are certainly a subtle and nice improvement to the image quality, but that was quite a hit to the performance with a 32.7 average. So let's try FSR Ultra Quality. Again, the Ultra Quality setting at 1440p, I do think looks pretty good. I think a lot of people would find this perfectly usable. And this is having a very noticeable impact to our frame rate. In this difficult scene, we're in the 40s. And now, uh, you know, as we go outside, we should see that increase. So, you know, the mid 40s are definitely playable. For me, 30s tough to stomach. Mid 40s and then in, into the mid 50s outside is a lot more, rea uh, you know, realistic to be a possible use case. Although when you compare it to the frame rates you're getting without using any RT, it's just a massive difference. And I mean, FSR ultra quality here is looking pretty impressive. A lot of the fine details are still preserved, although I still think when you look at the palm trees, uh, it's the most obvious place where it looks kind of shimmery and blurred, especially in motion on, the, on those little leaves. So FSR ultra quality is certainly not identical to native, but the average frame rate there was 48.66 might be kind of useful, but for me, the ray traced reflections are the most noticeable ray traced effect. Although unfortunately they're also the most demanding ray traced reflection, uh, ray traced setting, at least compared to the, you know, the shadows and all that. 
So let's try it out at native here. It seems like we could at least, you know, lock a 30 FPS kind of experience, maybe even better. But, you know, like I said, it, it's still not quite where I want to be, and I would like to get uh, higher frame rates here. Now, here's the puddle. There's the amazing puddle. But it's not just the puddle. This is the most obvious thing in the benchmark run. But as you walk throughout the city, there's a lot of places, you know, vehicles, uh, other puddles. There's, there's walls and things like that that are gl glassy and have really nice reflections with the ray tracing. Uh, that don't really have reflections much at all without the ray traced reflections. And, you know, it's it's sort of usable here, although really it's not getting the frame rates that I would want. Um, first person kind of game especially. So yeah, averaging 42 there. So let's try something out. I want to try out, what if we keep the ray traced reflections and keep the native resolution? but we lower some of the non-ray traced settings. The difference between ultra and high without ray tracing is usually quite a big frame rate difference. So I thought I would try that out here, but now watching them side by side, it doesn't look like it accomplished a whole lot. <laughs> uh, this is maybe one or two FPS difference during the side by side. We'll see the average at the end. So it looks like reducing the non-ray traced settings was not able to pull up the averages like I had maybe hoped would happen. Uh, so that was gonna be my alternative to using FSR, was just lowering other settings. But, meh, didn't really, <laughs> didn't really pan out that way. Although I will say, again, you can see that the difference between the high settings and the ultra settings in this game are not that much visually, um, but you know, at least when you're not running ray tracing, they do have a, a large performance difference, which is what I was hoping would show up here. But yeah, it looks like a two FPS difference. <laughs> okay, so with that being the case, let's stick to the ultra setting, not the high setting with the ray traced reflections, but let's go back to trying to use FSR to bring up the frame rates. At the ultra quality here, even in this difficult bar scene, where at least within a reasonable dif distance of 60 fps especially on a variable refresh rate monitor you 55 doesn't feel that much different than 60 and as we go outside it'll bring the average up so i have a feeling we're going to average around 60 we'll see that at the end and once again we get our glorious puddles <laughs> and again the fsr ultra quality at 1440p is, in my opinion, looking pretty good, although I can tell things are just a hair blurrier, a hair more smeared, and I think the most obvious place to see it is foliage, especially these palm tree branches in the sunlight, where it's very obvious, whereas in other scenes, um, it, it holds up a lot better. Foliage is where FSR kind of falls apart a bit for me. Uh, 58.96 average though, so about 60 FPS there. So last thing I want to do is just take a look at, is 4K reasonable at all for any kind of ray tracing? So when I play this game at 4K on my 6800 XT, I usually do it at the high settings with FSR Ultra Quality, which looks really good to me at 4K. With uh, ray tracing, I had to go all the way down to the low ray tracing, which just gets us those local shadows, which to me honestly doesn't add that, that much to the image quality. And I still had to, to kick FSR all the way down to the quality setting, which if I'm rem remembering my percentages correctly, I believe is a 1440p upscale to 4K. Although, Ah, man, it might be a 1600p, because I think ultra quality is like 1800p. Anyway, it's somewhere between there. The point is, both of them actually look pretty good. Um, although I can tell, as it pans across like the palm tree branches and stuff, that the FSR ultra quality does look better. And since it's performing better, and to me the low ray tracing settings don't add a lot to the image quality, I'm going to go ahead and say I don't think we should be using ray tracing at 4K. Well, I think we made some various conclusions, which is it is certainly possible to use some combinations of FSR or just really low ray tracing settings like just localized shadows. And again, there are also some other games that I'm not testing here with, with much less demanding settings. But so it's, it's certainly possible to reach playable frame rates on a 6800 XT at 1440p and use ray tracing. 
But in my personal opinion, when you're comparing it up against the frame rates that you reach without ray tracing, and you actually look at the image quality difference, uh, you know, you gain something with ray tracing, but as soon as you use FSR, even at the ultra quality setting, there is a little bit of hit to image quality. And then when you go beyond the ultra quality setting, especially, uh, you know, below the 4K when we're at 1440p, I think it's just too much for me. So in general, uh, in most games that feature ray tracing, on my 6800 XT, I'm just going to leave it off. I am really excited to see what sorts of advancement in ray tracing, uh, you know, power that we get in the next generation of GPUs from both AMD and NVIDIA. Because even NVIDIA's 3000 series, while it has better ray tracing performance than our um, RDNA 2 GPUs from AMD, it's still at a point where in a lot of cases it might not make a lot of sense for a lot of people to use it when you compare it to the kinds of frame rates that you can get without it. And I'll be exploring that in other videos. I've honestly already done some of that, but I don't know which videos I'm going to publish first. So I might be linking you a like 3080 tested with ray tracing up here, or I might not, depending on if that video is actually published. And with that being said, I think I need to go eat lunch. I'm hungry and I'm also thirsty. And check out what this cup looks like on a green screen. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> green cups on a green screen is quite, uh, quite fun. All right. I hope all of you have an excellent day.